heart's desire is to let our light shine, not only here, but all across the world. Amen. You know, the, the, the world didn't give that, that light to us, so we, we cannot let the world take that light from us. God has put something in us that no man can, can do. He saw fit for us to be a, a person here that uh, can, can share that light with those around. And I, I'm, just, I'm just praying that um, I continue to allow the Lord to use me in the way that He sees fit. Not how I want to. I want to speak like someone else. I want to sing like someone else. How the Lord sees fit for me, because God, God can use me just as I am. Amen. And so I, I, I truly um, would ask that that you all uh, pray with me in in that. I thank Lord for my my children on tonight. They were they were singing uh, right at six o'clock this this evening. But just just the. Uh, a desire that God has placed in them to want to work and be and be used. And I thank the Lord for 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 that. So, and um, I thank the Lord for this place that, that we have been able to to use and come and praise and worship. Uh, just as a job to to pray for us as we go stronger in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. Good evening. Uh, I just want to. Uh, Thank God for all that he's doing in our lives and in your guys' lives, you know. Um, a while back, I used to, I was talking to uh, Brother Simmons about this. <laughs> a while back, I used to um, want something really bad for somebody for somebody else. And I, and I realized I'm so happy that that never came true because had that happened to somebody else, it would have torn me down spiritually and, you know, in this life. And um, I just recognize, you know, because that never came, because what I wanted never had come to fulfillment, um, you know, you, you have you've been able to flourish because of it. And, um, you know, sometimes you don't recognize how how your thoughts or how the things that you want for somebody else is truly detrimental to you and to them, you know, to, uh, physically and spiritually. So um, I just I thank God for for you know watching over us, even though I didn't you know I didn't know how or didn't know how to even think how to <laughs> to you know look do what's right. But uh, and then uh, another testimony for the Simmons family is uh, Daquan got uh, an acceptance into the AGR. I don't know how to call it. The acceptance. A recommendation. A recommendation. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> a recommendation. <laughs> each other as we go, amen. amen. But I, what I want you to do, if you would, just read from it tonight, sir. And uh, we're going into the Word of God, and we're going to talk about believers of Christ. Amen. amen. And um, if we would take for a thought under that, being an effective witness. Being an effective witness, amen. 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 That's our thought for tonight, being an effective witness. We're going to start out in the book of Mark. In Mark the 16th chapter. We just believe in God that somebody's gonna hear the word. 
whether it be here locally, we get the, get the news, or just across, whoever picks it up, amen? We're expecting that God is going to move through somebody's heart, somebody that needs to know God, amen? amen. We believe in the prayer of faith, amen? amen? The prayer of faith, the Bible says, shall save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, amen? amen? The prayer of faith can save a soul, amen? amen. If you believe, amen? amen. So we're talking about believing tonight, believers in Christ, amen? So as we come together to pray, let's all believe. Let's join hands together, amen? And let us believe as we go to the throne of grace, amen, that the word of God that comes forth tonight not only will bless our soul, but somebody else too. Father, in your mighty name, we're coming for you, Lord. Just saying thank you. Lord God, we don't take this opportunity to come before that throne lightly, oh God. But we're so appreciative from the bottom of our heart and the depths of our soul, Lord God, we're saying thank you for all that you've done. Lord God, you allowed us to come together in your house, which is called by your name, amongst other believers, oh God, in your name. Lord God, we believe in your power. We believe in the very essence of who you are, the creator of heaven and earth. And for that, we say thank you. Lord God, we ask asking that you save souls tonight. Lord God, from the youngest child to the oldest, oh God, we ask asking that you come to mourn our lives, oh God. That you stand up in us. That your spirit have the right of way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, give us an ear to hear what your word is saying. To the church tonight, oh God. And that that sinner, oh God, that man that's lost, that woman that's lost, that boy that's lost, that girl that's lost, would see the great light in your people, oh God, that you said that we are the light of the world, a city that sit on the hill that cannot be hid. They would see the good works that we're doing before you, and you would get the glory. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, help us to stand up and be bold soldiers for you, oh God. Whether it be on our job, whether it be on the school, wherever we are, oh God, that we would say a word for you in due season, oh God. That would cause somebody, Lord God, even trouble heart, trouble minds, oh God, realizing that the time is short. Your son is soon to return. And it's time for us to get our business straight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, help us to take this walk seriously, oh God. And help those that are under the sound of my voice to take a listening ear, oh God, to what you're saying to us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And we ask that you continue to lead in God. For you said that they that be led by the Spirit, to them they gave power to become the sons of God. Lord God, thank you for receiving us as your sons. Thank you for receiving us as your daughters. Thank you for being the father of your children, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, have your way in this place tonight. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. And we ask that you come to more and have your way, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Let's go into the word of God. Amen. Believers in Christ and being effective witness. Amen. We're going to go to Mark, the, the 16th chapter. we got quite a few scriptures here. But if you would help us out tonight, Mark, the 16th chapter. And we're going to start at the ninth verse. Mark 16 and 9. We're talking about here the resurrection of Christ. Amen. After he rose from the dead. We want to take a look at what he told us as believers to do. Amen. Believers in Christ. He sent us out. Amen. We know all, all of us know the great commission in Matthew the 28th chapter. The Bible says that he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. Amen? Amen. But here, Jesus is getting ready to send them out. And he's preparing them. And we need to be prepared as witnesses too. We need to be prepared because God has a work for us to do. But we need to be prepared. We don't send people out on the job. Even in the army. I know in the military, you don't send people out on, on the battlefield without the proper equipment. Amen. Amen? If you send a man out there without the proper equipment, he's subject to get hit. He's subject to be out there without the proper support, the proper backup. He even needs a radio to be able to call for support. Amen. Amen. And that's what God has given us. He's given us prayer. That's our radio to call for backup. Amen. Amen. In the midst of a, a trouble and, and, and crooked and perverse generation, we need to be able to pray to God and say, Lord, I need your backup. I need that spirit of God to stand up in me, to come on in the inside and make my brothers, make my sisters. Sometimes we feel like we're all alone, but God will send backup Amen. through prayer. Amen. Amen. Mark the 16th chapter and starting at the ninth verse. Mark 16 and 9. Uh-huh. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Uh-huh. Out of, out of, of whom he had cast seven devils. Seven, seven, seven devils. Amen. We see that this is the first person that Christ appeared to. And I, I took a look at this and it's, it's amazing because what Christ does a lot of times is he uses 
somebody he's already done a great work for to be a witness to draw others. Amen. And sometimes we can see that Christ has, has healed our bodies. Maybe he's done something miraculous in our life. And we'll sit down on Christ. But who was the first person that he appeared to? A woman he cast seven devils out of. He didn't appear to Peter. He didn't have to do that for Peter. He didn't appear to any of the other 11 disciples. Because at this point, Judas had already hung himself. There were only 11 left. He didn't appear to none of the 11 disciples. He only appeared first to Mary Magdalene. A woman that he had cast several devils out. This woman realized that the state she was in before her, her meeting with Christ was a terrible state. She realized that the state she was in before she came to Christ, she needed help. But after she met Jesus, after she met amen. amen. After she met the Savior of the world, she wasn't like she was before, amen. amen. And that's how we should be. When we come in contact with Christ, we shouldn't be the same way, amen. We should be ready. We should be like that woman that Jesus met at the well in the fourth chapter of John. The Bible says he began to tell her that, that go and tell your husband. When she says, sir, I have no husband. He said, you say well, because the one you got ain't, ain't yours either. <laughs> amen. The woman said, you must be a prophet. Because you know all my business, amen. <laughs> amen, that's essentially what she was saying. You, you must be a prophet. We know that, that there was prophesied that there was one coming. But you are the one. Amen. And, and after he got done telling her about herself and telling her how she could be a changed person, the Bible says she went back to the city and she began to tell everybody, come see a man. Come see a man that tell me everything about myself. Come see a man that not only told me everything about my past, but told me about where I'm headed to. Amen. amen. Gave me a brighter future. Amen. Didn't just talk about my past, but told me that after you repent of all your evil doings and all your, your deeds, God can come into your life by his son Jesus Christ and clean you up. Jesus said you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We can be clean. We don't have to stay in that old, old hung down head, that old bow over back. We can stand up. We can lift our heads up to Christ. And the Bible said we can come with, without wrath and without doubt and lift up holy hands and give God the praise. Amen. 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 Uh-huh. And she went and told them that he had he been with him. Uh-huh. As they mourned and wept. And here, after he, he met with her, the scripture says the other ones, the disciples, they were there mourning, they were weeping, amen, because he had, he had hung out on that cross and he had shed that blood. And they, they saw him carry him off the cross and carry him to the tomb. And that's the only thing that was in their mind is his death. Amen. It's, it's something, a lot of times we deal with people, you know, in counseling and just 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 one-on-one -on -one talking to people. And a lot of times people get caught up in their situation. They know, oh yeah, I believe God is, is, is this and that. But sometimes they get caught up in the situation. Yes, sir. And that's the midst of, of, of what the disciples were in right now. They were caught up in the fact that Christ had died. But they forgot that, that he said that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God shall deliver them out of them all. You may be going through, you may be in the midst of affliction. You may be troubled right now. But do you remember that God is a healer? Do you remember that God is a deliverer? Do you remember that God is a savior? Do you remember that God can come into your life and change you? You don't have to stay in that state. Amen. You got to remember what he said to us. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. And they, when they had heard that he was alive, uh -huh. and he'd been seen of her, believed not. Look, look, even after that, you go to people and you try to tell them, look, just, 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 just try, try. Mm -hmm. Let, let's just pray together. Let, let's just... Let's just, um, you know, just take my word, you know. You try to get the same conviction that you have over to them. It seems like it's just not enough. It seems like they got, they got to see it for themselves. Mm -hmm. David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, sir. This is something you have to do for yourself. Yes. Children, you have to start tasting the Lord for yourself right now. At a young age, you have to try God right now. You can see the, the benefits. You can see how your parents are talking about the goodness of the Lord. You can see how your parents, sometimes they may be in, in, a, in a hard place. But eventually you can see him testify about how God brought him out. Amen. amen. But but that's that's your parents, amen. amen. You you have to try God for yourself, amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh-huh. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. After that, he appeared to another form, uh-huh. As they walked and went into the country. Amen. You remember the scripture says he appeared, I believe, as a gardener, and he walked along with them, and they didn't realize who he was. And the scripture says that he began to go into the scripture and he began to, to expound on the, all the holy scriptures and the prophets concerning himself. But as they walked, they didn't realize that they were walking with Jesus. 
Amen. That's the same, same even in our time. Now we can go into the Word of God with people and we can expound about Christ in their life. And it's like their eyes are just blind and they can't see that, that this Christ that we're talking about is in you. This Christ that we're talking about, the Bible says that he's the father of all. He's in you all. He's above you all. He's through you all. You, you can be of this one and that one, but, but I want you to know Christ is the one, there's the essence of him in all of us. Amen. Because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. Amen. The scripture says none of us would be here. None of these things that we see are made out of things that we see. But the scripture said God spoke a word, and that word that he spoke was Christ. And that word went out and performed what he said. He said, let there be light. And Christ was that word that went out there and flung the light out of the darkness. The Bible said, he said, let there be uh, sea and, and, and fish and fowls in the air and all these things. And Christ was the one that went out there and formed all these things. Amen. Christ was that word. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said in John, the, the first chapter, the Bible said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh yeah, he was the word, and he still is the word, but that word took on flesh. That word took on the form of man. He came down here so he could, he could identify with you and I. He came down here so when we looked at him, we could see flesh and blood. We could see a man that's been put through like we'd be put through, but still without sin. Mm -hmm. Then he cause us to say, what? what's to him? What's to him? How is he able to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover? What's to him? Isn't he a man just like us? The scripture says there was a man that was... Uh, laying uh, in his bed and the Bible said that Jesus was in the house teaching and they couldn't get to him because of the press and man there were so many people in there so what the men did there were some men that brought him there what they did they climbed up on the roof and man they realized that yeah we've been telling you about this Jesus but that's us telling you it's not enough if you can get to him for yourself we willing to help you Amen. That's what we're saying to, to all under the sound of my voice here and everywhere we go. As believers in Christ, to be an effective witness, you have to understand that you might have Christ, but you've got to be able to get those same people to Christ. It's not about getting them to you. Amen. It's not about getting them to, to, to the church of God over here on this corner or, or Mount Zion over there. It's not about the location. It's about getting them to Christ. Amen. Amen. When they get to Christ and when they come to the location, there's power in the midst. Amen. 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 That's what happened when the men brought that, that, that man on his bed to Christ. The Bible said they began to tear off the roof. They said there's nothing that's going to stop us from getting our brother to Christ. That sounds like compassion to me. They said there's nothing that's going to stop us. We see you in, in a need. We see you that, that you need Christ. We see that you need Christ. You, you're telling me with your own mouth. With, you're telling me that you can't make it. You're telling me that the bills are too much for you. You're telling me that the husband ain't treating you right. You're telling me that your wife ain't treating you right. You're telling me those children ain't acting right. But you need Christ. Let me get you to Christ. Amen? Let me get you to Christ. We're willing to help you. We're willing to tear the roof off. Amen? Amen. 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 Whatever it takes, we're willing to tear the roof off to get you there. Yeah. Amen? People got to have that much confidence in you that you with them all the way. Amen? Amen. They may start off in this journey and they may turn their back. And what, what we do? Well, they weren't, they weren't really, they weren't real anyhow. Uh -huh. Now, that's not it. Mm -hmm. If you really want Christ, I'm willing to tear the roof off. Amen? Amen. Why? Because I'm a believer in him. Amen? I've been, I've been persuaded in my own mind and nobody's going to change my, my belief. Christ is the answer. Amen? Amen. Uh huh. And they went and told it unto the residents. Uh huh. Neither believed. They <laughs> and after they went and told him, they still didn't believe. Uh huh. And afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. And now they're sitting down eating, refreshing themselves. And as they're they're refreshing themselves, here comes Christ, and he appears to them not not in another form, but now he comes as he is. Amen. And what took place when he revealed himself to them? Uh huh. And upbraided them with their unbelief. The Bible said first what he had to do is the scripture tells us we got to repent. Amen. It's more than just giving the preacher your hand. It's more than just saying, I believe this, that, and the other. But first of all, you got to repent. Amen. Before you can really come to Christ, you got to repent. What does repent mean? You got to acknowledge of your wrongdoing. It don't mean you got to stand up here and list all the wrong things you've done because there's too much. Amen. Amen. There's too many things you can't even remember all the wrong things you've done. But what you got to do is realize that you're in a lost state and you need a savior. Amen. Oh, I'm repenting of, of walking in, in, in deceit. I'm repenting of walking in, in my mindset that I got it all together. 
I'm repetitive and walking in that I can, I, I'm a self-made man. That's what people are saying now. You can pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. But I want you to know the scripture, uh, uh, a good saying is a man wrapped up in himself make a small bundle. Mm. Amen. Mm. But when you get wrapped up in Christ, mm. amen. Mm. Oh, you got some power. Mm. Amen. Uh-huh. And heart is of, the, of heart. He because they believe not in which had seen him after he was risen. And sometimes that's what it takes. You know, even dealing with people in compassion, you got to have them see themselves. Mm -hmm. And then even with, with trying to help people and trying to be an effective witness, you need to see yourself. Amen? amen. So I can't always, baby, amen, I can't always pat you on the back. Sometimes we got to come straight with it. Sometimes we got to tell people, brother, you just wrong. Sister, you just wrong. You know, before I can really see myself, my brother had to come tell me one time, son, you just wrong. Oh, that hurt me coming from my father. Him telling me, oh, you're wrong. But it took that to see myself. Amen. Amen. He, he couldn't always just baby me. He, couldn't, he had to come to me straight one time. Amen? Amen. He had to come to me and tell me, you know, son, you're really disappointing me. Amen. Mm. Oh, he said, oh, them hurt words hurt. But it took that for me to realize that I wasn't going the right direction. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but all oh, this is what Jesus did. He didn't just upbraid him. What did he do? The Bible said he upbraided him for the unbelief. And their disobedience, but what what happened after that? Uh huh. And he said it to them. But what did he say after that? Go ye into all the world. Look, you still been commissioned. <laughs> yeah, you didn't believe, you didn't do right here over here, but you still been commissioned. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you have a relationship with me. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that I didn't come to you just like I, I'm not so hard up. I just got to use you. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I love you, and I want to use you. Amen. That's what we have to understand. Christ loves us. And a lot of times the mistakes that we've made or the wrongdoing that we've done, it makes us feel like we can't be used by the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know after he gets done upbraiding you for your unbelief, after he gets done dealing with you for being disobedient, he still wants you to know, go. Don't sit here and cry about it. Don't sit here and hold your head down. I just want you to see yourself. And after you get done seeing yourself, I want you to see me. Amen? Uh-huh. And preach the gospel to every preacher. Go and preach the gospel to every preacher. Uh huh. He that believeth. And he that believeth. And is baptized. And is baptized. He that believeth and not just believeth, but what? What you also got to do? What? Is baptized. And is baptized. Amen. This is a part a lot of us are, are falling short on. Amen. We say we believe, but have we been down in the water? Hmm. Hmm. These are the words of Jesus. This is not man's words. Jesus said, "He that believeth." And the word "and" is a conjunction word. The word and means you can't leave one without the other. But your belief causes you to go down in the water. Mm -hmm. My belief causes me to say, I need to be baptized. Mm -hmm. My belief causes me, I need to make a, a, a formal statement to this world. Goodbye, world. Mm -hmm. There's a song we used to sing, they say in the old church, but I coming up with this to say, goodbye, world. I've left this world behind. I've crossed the separation line, and I'm not going back anymore, amen? Mm -hmm. Say goodbye, world. I'm not going there anymore. I, I'm making an a, a open confession that that old life that I used to live, that old man that I used to be, I'm not that anymore. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I'm being identified with Christ. Baptism is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We're not just being buried, but in baptism we come up in the newness of life. Amen? No, the water is not going to save you. No, just going in the water is not going to make you change. But when you got your heart right, amen, when you go in that water, you really committed yourself to Christ. Then when, then, then when you do it, it's because of your belief. Amen. When you really got your heart right and you go down in that water, it's because of your belief. Amen, amen. amen that water ain't going to make you believe. Amen. 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 And a lot of people, that's what's going on. They're going down in the water, but they don't understand. Why, why is the change coming? Well, you got to get your heart right first. Yes. The scripture says in the 8th chapter of Acts, Philip, the man of God, he was out there in the middle of the desert. The spirit had led him out there. And there was a man, a eunuch. He was riding in his chair and he was reading the scripture. And he didn't understand what he was reading. But this man was serious. This man wanted to know, Lord, what are you saying to me? The scripture said he just came from Jerusalem worshiping. He was there lifting up his hands. He was there crying out to God. He was there giving all that he had to the Lord. But he still didn't understand, Lord, what are you saying to me? Look at what the disciples were doing. They were walking with Jesus for three and a half years. They were there telling other people that this is the one. This is the Messiah. They were worshiping him. But they didn't understand that this is what I want you to do. Amen. 
So, so, so here, Christ, uh, the Holy Ghost sends Philip out here to this man. And Philip runs up on him and hears him read. And he asks him, Do you understand what you're reading? He said, How can I instruct some man God? Here? And the Bible said that Philip, he, he, he bid Philip to come on into the chariot. And Philip got up in the chariot and rode on with him for a while. And as he was riding, he wasn't just catching a ride. Amen. As he was right, the Bible said he took that same scripture that the man was reading and didn't understand. He opened up unto him the Holy Scriptures. Just like Jesus did when he walked with the two disciples that didn't realize who he was. He walked with them and opened up to him the Holy Scriptures. And after they got done, the Bible said that they, they began to speak for themselves. My, did not our heart burn within us as the man of God spoke to us by the way. Did not our heart burn within us? And that's the same way this eunuch was. He was hearing Philip go into the scripture and teach him about Christ. Teach him from all the way from Genesis, all the way to where it was at right there. That very present moment. This is all about Jesus. What we do here is all about Jesus. Every song you say, it's all about Jesus. Every testimony you give, it's all about Jesus. Every everything you do, whether you're giving money, whether you're giving time, whether you're giving of yourself, it all ought to be about Christ. Amen. 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 People ought to know that that you mean business. People ought to know that that, that woman there, she she everything she does is about Jesus. I remember a few months back, well it was last year. I remember uh, Sister Simmons testifying about all that job, and she began to tell people about Jesus. And people began to kind of. Uh -huh. Now I don't want to hear that. Uh -huh. I don't want to hear that. And what the devil does, he tries to, he tries to stop your mouth. Mm -hmm. What he do is say, well, I'm the prince of the power of the air. So what I do is I'll get in the air and I'll put something in somebody else's ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't say that, but I'm going to put that in their ear because I'm the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. You wonder how rumors and stuff get spread in this, the devil. Mm -hmm. James said, from what's coming wars and rumors and all these things from amongst you, it's, it's of your flesh. It's of the devil. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. Mm -hmm. they, they put it in people's ear. Uh -huh. And it gets out there, and, and pretty soon somebody's saying, well, we don't need you anymore. Amen. But Christ is saying, don't go home and sit down, because I have need of you. Amen. Amen. Don't go home and sit down. I don't want to have to upbraid you for your own belief. I want you to know I did this for a purpose. Amen. I want you to go out and keep on testifying about me. Amen. Keep on telling somebody that I'm a savior of the world. And first of all, I'm a savior to you. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. And is baptized shall be saved. And he that is baptized, believe it, and is baptized shall be saved. Uh-huh. But he that believeth not shall be damned. But he be that believeth not shall be damned. My goodness, he that believeth not is lost. Amen. The scripture tells me in, in John, I believe the third chapter, he that believeth not upon the name of the only begotten Son of God is condemned already. Mm -hmm. Amen. He that believeth not is already lost. Amen. When this gospel goes forth and you don't believe, amen, you're lost right now. Amen. As the word of God is going forth, if you don't believe what's written, if you don't believe the testimony of Jesus Christ, you are lost. Amen. I don't care. <laughs> and, and yes, you out there, amen, that might be listening, that might be watching, amen. I don't care what church you go to. I don't know how, how long you've been there, amen. amen. If you don't believe the message of Christ, you are lost today, amen. amen. But I want you to know Jesus doesn't want to leave you in that state. Amen. Jesus doesn't want to leave you in that state. You might say, well, I, I've been going to church with my grandmother. I've been going to church with my grandfather. I've been doing this since great grand and great grandma. I've been doing this for many years. Some people even testify of being saved for 30 and 40 years, but aren't testifying about Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen. My God. Come on. Come on. Been saved for so long, but have not been baptized. Mm -hmm. Amen. Been walking this life for so long. But still are not an effective witness. Amen? Amen. Still, still are up and down, up today and down tomorrow. But Jesus has already upbraided us for our unbelief. Amen. There once was a time the scripture said he winked at our sin, but he is not winking anymore. The Bible says he's calling every man, every woman, every boy, every person, every creature that this gospel is being preached to, we have to repent. Amen. Amen. And it starts with us. We have to repent. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And this is the exciting part. Not only did he send them out, but he said, I want you to preach the gospel, amen? And the gospel that I preach, or that I'm sending you out to preach, I want you to know there's some signs of the effectiveness of this gospel. Amen? There are some markings of the effectiveness of a true witness, amen? There are some markings that go along with it, amen? The Bible says you go and you preach the gospel to every creature, and he that 